Hi, my name is Emma Cameron, and this presentation is a part of the RDOS Noxious Pest Program, which has the goal of educating residential tree fruit growers on their responsibility to prevent and control insect pests. This video is a part of a series that highlights different fruit types and the different pests that anyone with a fruit bearing tree or shrub may come into contact with. These videos are available to anyone that is looking to educate themselves on fruit tree care and insect pests. The Okanagan Similkameen is home to one of the best growing regions in the country, with an abundance of farms, orchards, and vineyards. Farmers in this region gather and sell their produce at local markets eight months of the year, providing a bounty of fresh produce. But some of us still want to grow our own food, whether that be for helping children to learn about where their food comes from, or just the simple satisfaction of being more self-sufficient. But this comes with a responsibility that should be known before you consider planting a fruit bearing tree or a shrub. Fruit tree growers are responsible for preventing and controlling insect pests that can not only damage their own plantings, but also neighboring growers that largely depend on fruit productions for their livelihoods. Extra time, effort, and money will be required to adequately care for your fruit tree to not only avoid harmful insect pests, but also to grow fruit that is an optimal size and flavor. Although I will be referring to trees in this series, it should be known that this refers to any plant material that supports fruit production, including berry bushes and grapevines. Also, although this video series is focused on the pests and the bylaw in the regional district Okanagan Similkameen, most of the information provided is applicable to other nearby regions and even throughout the province of BC as a whole, as general fruit tree care is applicable to anyone thinking about planting a fruit bearing tree or shrub, and many of the pests discussed threaten fruit plantings beyond the Okanagan Similkameen. The videos in this series will provide tips on general fruit tree care, pest management as a whole, and the specific pests and diseases that affect different fruit bearing trees and shrubs. Before planting a fruit tree, or even if you have just inherited a fruit tree during a recent move, it's important to understand these five essential tasks before taking it on. The most important thing is to understand the RDOS bylaw that is on the RDOS webpage for fruit tree pests. It states the responsibility of the homeowner to prevent and control insect pest infestations, and explains the steps that occur if there is a complaint about your fruit tree. This is important to understand because if there is any negligence to general care, and pest prevention and insect infestation can affect the livelihood of neighboring commercial orchards. Once you understand this bylaw, you should next ask yourself what the reason is behind planting a fruit tree. If it is for decorative and ornamental purposes, there's a plethora of beautiful ornamental trees and shrubs at your local nursery that will be a much better option and at a fraction of the cost. And to bounce off that, you must also be prepared to invest more time and money in order to avoid pest infestations. This will include diligent sanitation practice, effective pruning, ensuring the soil nutrition is adequate, and proper harvest practice. Next is a very important step that is research. Do the research on your specific fruit tree that you're wanting to plant and understand its planting requirements and its susceptibility to pests. Once you have done this and you're at your local nursery or garden center, ask questions to the employees and suppliers so you can thoroughly understand what you're getting into. To prevent insect pests, most of the time, these strategies will be essential in your fruit tree care routine. Sanitation is by far the most effective way to prevent pests. This includes keeping a clean ground cover, consistently removing any dead or rotting fruit and leaves, and having a consistent weeding routine. Pruning is a skill in itself and research should be done before you tackle this. It should not happen in cold temperatures as winter injuries will welcome pests and disease to your tree and your tree should be pruned significantly each year to promote light and air penetration. A simple way to avoid certain pests is thinning your fruit to singles. Most families and homeowners don't need a whole tree's worth of fruit and thinning will ensure your fruit size and flavor is optimal. For apricots and plums, you should space them apart by one to two inches and should be done in early April for apricots and June for plums and prunes. This last way to prevent pests is very simple and will work very well, and that is bagging your fruit or your entire tree. For apricots, plums, and prunes, you can place horticultural bags or plastic bags if you're unable to find them, and place these over the young fruitlets and leave them on for almost the whole growth process so pests don't feed or burrow into your fruit. 
Netting the entire tree is also a useful strategy to prevent many types of insect pests. This is the basic outline for an integrated pest management strategy. When you first think you may have a pest problem, following these simple steps will help in diagnosing your problem. First, you must identify the pest type and if it is a common and severe problem in the Okanagan Similkameen. For example, the very common codling moth gets out of hand very quickly and requires immediate attention, whereas something like mites is very common in this area and a fruit tree can handle low numbers with, without any damage. Second, you must determine how severe the damage is. You must ask yourself if the tree will be severely affected and may die if immediate intervention is not done. You must also take into account the likelihood of spreading and how invasive it is. For example, the apple maggot should be something that's frequently looked for, even though the Okanagan Similkameen is free of this pest, as it's known to decimate crops in areas close by and must be reported immediately. Thirdly, you must determine what your plan of action is. If you decide that intervention is necessary, always use the least toxic control method possible. Using chemical intervention is typically not necessary for residential plantings and can sometimes do more harm than good by removing the beneficial insects that are keeping the pest in check. And always consult professionals if you're unsure about what to do. The mealy plum aphid, as well as other aphids, are found in colonies, commonly on leaves and twigs. Adults are translucent and are quite small with a white powdery coating. Damage includes curling leaves and slow growth of shoots and fruitlets or a complete lack of development and fruit drop. Aphids often promote honeydew production, which welcomes sooty molds to grow. This honeydew attracts ants, which protect the aphids from natural predators so that they can keep feeding on the sweet honeydew, which can lead to a mealy plum aphid infestation. Therefore, by getting rid of the ants with sticky banding, this will make the aphids more vulnerable to natural predators to keep them in check. You should also Frequently check leaves before bud burst for aphids, and avoid excessive nitrogen application as this will promote aphid colonies. The peach twig borer can affect both apricots and plums, but mostly affects apricots. The larvae are red to brown caterpillars with a dark brown head and white bands on the body. The moths are rarely seen, but are standard looking gray moths. Damage is caused mostly by the larvae, which feed on the ripening fruit mostly at the stem end, where they can also be frost presence. And this is where you can look to see if there's any peach, peach twig borer presence. There may also be wilting of developing shoots, and you can manage this by cutting out these wilted shoots and destroying any larvae seen. To destroy the infested fruit, you should seal the calls in a sealed bag and place them in the freezer or the sun for about a week to kill the pest before throwing it out. Leaf rollers can affect many fruit tree types, but are amongst the more common with apricots and plums. Their larvae are translucent green caterpillars with a black head, and the adult moth has gold, tan, and white markings on the wings. The damage seen is leaf rolling, where larvae will reside inside as it provides them with shelter. There may also be small holes in the buds, and they may have chewed the blossom petals. Feeding damage can cause deep, rusted scars or surface creasing on the fruit. Management includes pruning back branches and twigs that have larval presence, and the pruning of the upper canopy more so than the lower will promote airflow and sunlight penetration, which will detract leaf rollers. In your residential planting, you can also hand pick rolled leaves that contain the larvae. Other pests to look out for are earwigs, which can sometimes also be beneficial as well as harmful, so extra research should be done before you attempt control methods for this pest. Tent caterpillars and fall webworms can also be seen. They often get confused, but fall webworm is the more common and is more active in July to September, whereas the tent caterpillar is active in May to June. Shot hole borers may also be seen, in addition to the brown marmorated stink bug, which needs to be reported to the BC Ministry of Agriculture. And mites are also common, but it should be noted that most fruit trees can handle a certain amount of mites before it becomes a problem. Pests and disease can sometimes go hand in hand, where pest problems can weaken the tree and welcome disease and vice versa. Cranium blight causes small red or brown spots which later appear as scabs later in the season and should be pruned out and removed. Brown rot is caused mostly by wet weather, wet weather and leads to rotting ripening fruit on the tree and in storage, as well as twig damage and death. 
Black knot gall is most common in plums and should be pruned out when detected. Leaf shot hole is a disease that causes spots on new buds and young leaves that turn brown and fall out. Now that you know all about your responsibility to prevent and control insect pests, I hope that you weigh all of your options before deciding to plant a fruit tree. With extra time and effort, a fruit bearing tree or shrub in your backyard can offer healthy and delicious fruit but you should speak to your local nursery or grower supply staff about what to expect before purchasing the tree. They are highly knowledgeable and can offer additional growing and pest avoidance tips and answer any of the questions you may have about growing fruit trees in your local region. Growing a fruit tree is time consuming and typically requires extra money to care for if you want delicious fruit with little to no insect pests. But you can also leave all the work to the professionals and support your local farmers markets instead. This is a good option if you are not willing to follow general care tips to prevent pests or spend the extra money to do so. Before we go, it is important to also remember that everywhere in BC is bear country. More than a quarter of all black bears in Canada live in BC, and here in the Okanagan, bears have come into conflict with humans in all parts of the region, even in the middle of every community, town, and city. Often these bears are lured in by unsecured garbage and attractants like fruit trees, berry bushes, and backyard fowl. Caring and maintaining your home raised food sources goes a long way to having a pest free, bountiful harvest that you get to enjoy while keeping wildlife wild and community safe. For more information on pests that affect different fruit trees, there are fact sheets available on the RDOS website that are available to anyone considering planting a fruit tree and are organized by fruit tree type. These are some important contacts and links that you should have readily available if you're considering planting a fruit tree or already have one. There are two links that you should read on general care and pest management tools that are extremely helpful and are important reference guides. If you have any indication of brown marmorated stink bug, another potentially disastrous problem for the Okanagan Similkameen, you should report it online or contact Susanna from the BC Ministry of Agriculture.